name is Kerry Badham and I'm delighted to show you today our brand new FMM More Than A Dahlia All-in-One Flower Cutter. This is the cake we've made to demonstrate the brand new Dahlia Cutter. We've made all the flowers on the cake and also these shapes that we've attached to. On the cake we've got three flowers to demonstrate the cutter. This one is perfect for beginners. This one is perfect for the more advanced or the more adventurous. And at the top here, we've also made a chrysanthemum flower. That consists of three cutters, three different sizes. And as you can see, they're all in one. The first flower we're going to demonstrate how to make is the orange dahlia. The first part of the dahlia that we need to make is the bud. So I have a two centimeter ball. I have a 20 gauge florist wire. I have some cutters. And I also have a dummy. And in here I've inserted a large straw. First thing I'm going to do is cut my wire. And I'm going to place this through the styrofoam ball. Of course, if you wanted to make this completely edible, then you would make a sugar ball. But for the purpose of the video, we're going to do it this way. And I also like to do it this way because it makes the flour a lot lighter. And people don't tend to really want to eat flour paste. So we look for the center. And we want this to hook into the center. So I've turned that over. and then I'm going to pop this into here so you can stand it in here which is fine but as you build this up it can become heavy and if you're using a slightly thinner wire that's where you would possibly use your straw it's entirely up to you The first thing we're going to do is we're going to cover our styrofoam ball and we're going to use the smallest dahlia cutter for this. So this is flour paste, this is the paste we recommend you use. Some people call it gum paste, some people also like to use modelling paste. But with modelling paste you can't roll it out as fine, flour paste dries a lot quicker and you have a much finer finish. Place your cutter on top, cut through, slide it around your mat, remove the excess and pop it through. You could use a circle cutter but using this is absolutely fine. Now we're going to attach this with water. Of course if you made this out of orange sugar then you wouldn't need to do this as the first layer but we want this to be that color because if anything shows through that way you won't be able to see it so we just want to make sure we've got this piece covered doesn't need to look really tidy because it's the under layer Pull my wire down a little bit more, make sure it doesn't pop out the top. Now we're going to make the, the center of our flower. So I've rolled out my flower paste or gum paste, whatever you want to call it. And we're going to cut out two pieces.
going to place these on our frame pad, turn them over and we're going to use, this is a large bottle. Turn them over and then we use a small pair of scissors and we cut your petals in half. To attach these to our ball, so I've turned them over and just going to put some water in here. We'll do that on the other one as well, leave it for a little bit and it becomes sticky. We're going to place this through the center, like this, and then just cup it round and. The thing you have to remember is, with nature, it's not perfect. So it doesn't matter if one sits slightly different. Just place this all the way around. Pull your petals up as much as you can to get into the center. But now you can see why we covered that in orange you wouldn't want any white bits showing and you just carefully work your way around now they do overlap each other on the flower when they grow so don't worry too much as you can see we've placed both layers around the bud as a flower grows it becomes lighter on each each layer so to do this we're just going to add some white flower paste to the orange and this will also give your flower depth and make it look more realistic I've rolled out my lighter layer of paste and it's nice and thin which is what you want the finer it is the more realistic it looks and we're going to cut out three still using the small cutter Remove the excess. Remove the excess. And again for the third and final. I'm going to put this back in the ball. I'm going to pop it under the cup to keep it airtight. I'm going to put two of them to one side in just a simple document wallet. This will keep it quite fresh, stop it from drying out while I work on this one. Now this one is our third layer that goes on the dahlia. So we're going to turn it over and we're going to ball tool. Just as before, I've done all the edges with the large ball tool and I'm going to into the petals as we did for the bud. Then we're going to turn this over and we're going to use our flute and vein tool and I'm going to drag this into the center and as you can see the petals curl upwards all the way round we need to dry this off slightly 
so it holds its shape and all I have here is uh, this is from my grocery store and this one had apples in it so I asked them kindly if I could if I could take it and they was happy for me to take them away so I just placed this inside and we're going to allow this to just dry a little so it holds its shape. These are the two cutouts that we put in the document wallet. As before, I've already gone around with a ball tool on each petal. So now we're going to turn them over and we're going to use this end, the veining end of the tool. And we're just going to draw into the center and this will give your flower texture and make it look more realistic. You want to do this all the way around on both cutouts. You've got a line, a very definite line that goes down the centre of the petal. So we're going to use a large cell pin. And be careful, you want to apply pressure, not too much pressure. You might want to practice it to begin with, entirely up to you. But I just go in and I draw to the centre. And you can see that it changes the shape of the petal. Go all the way around and it pulls it up towards you as well. You want to do this for both. petals a little pinch on the end entirely up to you so many different dahlias out there and of course different styles of flowers so that's why this cutter is very very flexible and I'm going to pop it in the former that I got from the grocery store Place it in there. Now we don't want these to dry completely, so you need to keep coming back and testing them. But it's all dependent on the weather, humidity, temperature in your room. So it's very difficult to tell you how long. But you, you'll um, go back and test it just so it's holding its shape. You're going to attach this layer here. So again, just water in the centre. This time we're not going to attach the petals, what we're going to do is just leave them slightly loose. So don't make the petals wet all the way up. And this time I'm going to place this into the straw. So you can see there, they're just slightly loose around the edge. I'm going to place that in the straw because I want them to stay up. So the petals have stayed nice. They're not clinging around the bud. So this is the, the next layer done. And now we're going to attach the other two layers that we had in our former. Exactly the same with water. Pop this through the centre. Like this. So the next layer, we want to make sure the petals fall in between. So we've already wet it. And just move it round. So you have a nice full bud. And now I'm going to turn this upside down, hook my wire over, and I'm going to hang it on the FMM flower stand. Two more, two of the medium and two of the large. Here are the outer layers. So these are the medium cutters 
and these are the large. I put these in a slightly larger format because in here it made them too small. I have ball tooled them, I've veined them, I've shaped them just as we did the first layers that we put on and now I'm going to wet them with water and attach them to our flower. Just as we did before, again making sure that we land between, so here. We're building the outer layers, it's nice and pretty. And where we've made them lighter as we've gone out, you can see the depth, but a natural flower does that as well. And also keep remembering that nature isn't completely perfect. layer and then the very final ones are the lighter water just the same pop it through the middle make sure it is in the middle otherwise it will end up out of shape and the final final layer and once I put this on again I'm going to put it on my drying stand not to dry completely because once we turn it up the other way it will open up a little and that one goes in there the second dahlia I'm going to show you how to make is for the more advanced or more adventurous and it's this one here just as we did earlier for the last dahlia I've made the bud exactly the same this time I've just made it in a pretty lemon color covered the polystyrene bud and then the two layers on the outside cutting them with the scissors all exactly the same as I did before if you wanted to you could use a sugar ball or not put it on a wire but I use it on a wire because it's really nice for being able to hang and dry and get a much nicer shape just as before we have a darker colour on the inside and as we come out we get lighter so the first part that we're going to do is two of the smallest cutter both in the darker pink so I've cut these out already and what you then need to do just as before place them on your foam pad sweep your ball tool around the edges to make them nice and fine, half on your pestle, half on your pad. Just as we did before, we're going to vein our petals to give them texture and make them look more realistic. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cut them into individual petals. We need to do this for both. We've got all our petals, individual, cut out. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pinch the ends of them, like this. And I'm going to wet my bud on my foam pad and just pop the first one on. So I'm going to test it for size first, see where I need to place it. So I think there you want the bud sitting in not poking out the bud sits deep in and then I just put them on you want to divide them in half there's ten petals on each 
and you just want to go round, pinching them as you go and placing them on. This is the first layer of petals that go around the bud. So I've evenly distributed them all the way around. If I just gently turn it up, you can see. So the bud is slightly in, not too much, but it's sitting deeper into the petals. So I'll turn it over and you can place this on some foam or your foam pad. Now the next layer need to be placed in between. You do exactly the same as I did earlier, but this time placing them in between. So pinch them, because then it gives you that nice shape. And just pop them in between, all the way around. So it's pinch, shape, and pop it in between until you've built the full layer. So this is the second layer of petals around the bud. And as you can see, I've placed them all in between the first ones. So keep it nice and symmetrical, give it a little tweak, and then we're gonna place it back on our foam, or you can put it on a hanging stand while you make the next layers. So if they come off, just reattach. I've done the third and fourth layer of the petals on the outside, exactly the same technique, made the pink slightly lighter, put them in between the others, stuck them on individually, just turn this over and you can see, you've got to be really careful with it at this stage because it will just come apart but we'll be popping it on the hanging stand afterwards to dry. So for the the final layers, this will be layer five and six, you need to make the paste a little lighter, follow exactly the same technique as I showed you on the, the first two that I put on, and that will give you the result that we have over here on the dahlia cake here. The third and final flower I'm going to quickly show you is the chrysanthemum. Just as we did before, I've made a bud in lemon again. So cover the, cover your polystyrene and your styrofoam ball. Then put two layers on the outside. Or if you make it out of the modelling paste, the actual ball, then you only need to put the two layers on the outside. So we're going to pop that in now. For this flower, you need two of the small, two medium, and two large. You could of course stop here if you want to, but if you want a nice big chrysanthemum then you need the large one as well. I've also made them slightly lighter as they've got bigger for the same purpose that a flower is darker in the centre, lighter as it grows on the outside but it also gives your flower depth and makes it look more realistic. Again you need to sweep over the edge of the petals on both flowers. Half on the flower, half on the foam pad. And you will do this for each layer. I'm just going to demonstrate it on the small. And then you would cut through. Exactly the same as we did earlier. But you're going to do this on each layer. So the small, the medium and the large. All exactly the same process all the way through. So then we take our cell pin and we pull it up and we draw to the centre. Exactly the same as we did before. 
all the way around on the small, the medium and the large layer. And then we're going to pop it in our apple tray that I got from the grocery store. And we're going to do this for all six. The ones I cut out earlier, I've just popped them in a plastic sleeve to keep them fresh and I'll work on those and come back to you when it's time to attach them all. These are the layers of petals that I cut out earlier. They've been drying in here for a little while. You don't want them completely dry. Ideally, you'd want them a little more dry than this, but for the purpose of the video, we're moving things along quite quickly today. So there's the two small, the two medium, and the two large I've put in the bigger trays, otherwise they would curl right over. So now we're going to remove them from the apple tray former. Let's do these four first. So nice and easy, to wet them all in the centre, you don't need a lot of water, if you do then it will just start to dissolve so, and it will get very messy, so again just pop it through the centre, hold it round, and this one. You know, if these had dried for just a tiny bit longer, they would have held their shape a bit easier. But where we've wet it, we want it to cling to the outside of the ball, but not too tight. So remember now that we're making a chrysanthemum. I'm just going to place that here gently. It's the middle. You could stop here if you wanted to. You could even just make buds. That would look very pretty. We're going to put them in amongst the spray. But if you want your flowers, because they're very on trend at the moment, to have nice big flowers. There's the next layer. Nice and pretty. Remember, we would have left them dry just for a tiny bit longer. And these are the bigger ones. As you can see where we're getting lighter as you come to the outer edge. Giving our flower some depth. I'm running out of water here. So again, just slide the wire through. Pretty, and we're just going to put the final one on. We've got a really pretty flower head here, and I would allow that to you can hang it for a while, allow it to dry. Don't want it too solid because we don't want it all curling round. To make them look even more realistic, what you would want to do is dust the edges. This is a clever an easy way to enhance your cake. You could even decorate a cake with just these coming down in different colours. I'm just going to show you how I made these now using the More Than A Dahlia Cutter. I've rolled out my flower paste, I've placed my cutter on top and then I move it around my mat. You want to be able to feel the mat underneath, get a nice clean cut. nice and simple and then all I do is I just take the small one line it up evenly and again apply pressure with your hands move it around your mat and then I move this onto a foam pad and I allowed it to dry completely before attaching it and standing it on the cake so here's the finished pink chrysanthemum. Then we have the simple dahlia coming down onto the, what we would say is the more advanced or the more adventurous. We've also shown you how we made these to add a nice designer touch to your cake. And you can do those in many colors or even decorate the whole cake coming down in those. To give your flowers some depth and make them look more realistic and enhance them, we've dusted the edges. Now you can only do this once they're completely dry. So you use an edible dust 
apply them with a dry paintbrush and you just brush on the areas. I've gone green in the center, pink on the outside. On here, I've done a lime green and I've just touched the tips this time. You could also come down the petals as you do each layer. That would add even more depth to it. And as we come down to the bottom here, I enhanced that with another lemon color and then I popped it on the corners as well. But you can only do this once it's completely dry. Once you've dusted them, you wave them over some steam to set. And then once they're fully dry, you can attach them to your cake with oil icing. Thank you for watching our More Than A Dahlia video. I've shown you just a couple of the flowers that can actually be made today, two different styles of dahlias and one chrysanthemum. We're really looking forward to seeing the flowers that you make using our brand new More Than A Dahlia cutter. Thank you.